just as serious as cancer diabetes, you know, heart conditions. It's a serious, serious epidemic. It's estimated that 91 people die each day from an opioid overdose in the United States. That's according to the federal government. Since 2000, the rate of overdose deaths has nearly quadrupled. We got here by people not paying attention to what was going on. Doctors being too easy on their patients giving out too many narcotics. Public health officials are calling it an epidemic. Children are among the most vulnerable. In order for us to affect the changes we need to affect in society, people have to be willing to be out there, to be verbal, to be outspoken, and say, I'm affected by this. KOCO is committed to exposing every aspect of this epidemic in a series of special reports, including tonight's 30-minute special. We are creating a community task force working with our parent company, Hearst Television, and our sister stations across the country to shed light on this issue. Over the next year, we're going to show you how to get help, how you can lend a hand, and what it's going to take to stop this cycle. Crystal Price looks into the struggle here at home. Opioid addiction impacts thousands of Oklahomans every year, and for hundreds of people, those consequences have been tragic. It's really an epidemic. There's no other way to, to describe it. An epidemic impacting everyone, from the street drug addict to the suburban mother who innocently started taking painkillers prescribed by her doctor. Over time, those drugs just started to take over. It became less about feeding the uh, and healing the pain and more about feeding an addiction. And and if the addiction gets out of hand, it can have tragic consequences. In 2015, there were 862 drug overdose deaths, and data shows that 69% of them were prescription drug deaths. But one way Oklahoma is working to fight the problem is through the prescription monitoring program. If you pull up the PMP website, pharmacist Lindsay Roberts says she has encountered patients trying to scam her into giving them pills with fraudulent prescriptions on average uh, a few times a week. But through the PMP system, okay. it's become a standard practice to check every patient's history who comes in asking for a controlled substance. She says this helps her catch those who may be doctor shopping and keep pills out of the hands of addicts. It's less available to them to supply the addiction, so it could definitely save lives. Crystal Price, KOCO 5 News. Oklahoma is making progress in the fight against opioid addiction. In 2013, we ranked second for most opioid overdose deaths. Now we are at number 10. I've seen some of the most affluent uh, people from affluent families, their kids are addicted and they're pregnant and to some of the lower socioeconomic status. From every corner of Oklahoma, the opioid crisis is devastating lives. It's ruining futures and it is draining our resources. In our state is consistently ranked in the top 10 nationwide for opioid painkiller deaths. Well, the state of addiction is Oklahoma's crisis. And I'm introducing you to our state's youngest victims. Unfortunately, this issue is quite large in Oklahoma. Pregnant women addicted to opioids. Drug abuse and dependency will affect anyone, uh, no matter who you are. Dr. Marvin Williams of OU Physicians says about 4% of prescription pain meds in America are used for non-medical reasons. In Oklahoma, that number is double, impacting not just mothers, but their babies. In our unit, we probably see about 10 to 20% of our babies had uh, you know, neonatal abstinence syndrome. Neonatal abstinence syndrome. It's something Dr. Edward Coe at the Integris Baptist Medical Center NICU has seen more of lately. Newborns in drug withdrawal. Once they are born, the umbilical cord is cut. So now the baby doesn't have those drugs. The baby treated just like if the mother was being treated for drug use with methadone and morphine in hopes of weaning them off. A process that can take as long as six weeks. The consequence potentially permanent. A lot of times uh, we always worry about learning disabilities, learning about, about neurodevelopment in the future. And the number of infants going through heroin and opiate withdrawal is on the rise. It is estimated the number in 2013 is five times what it was in 2004. That's the most recent data that's available. The biggest increase was in rural areas where 21% of babies had withdrawal symptoms. Newborns who suffer from withdrawals are at risk for seizures. They also cry excessively and they have problems sleeping 
and feeding. An alarming number of people suffering from opioid abuse and addiction are just kids. And there's a drug that can reverse the effects of an overdose. Crystal Price shows us how Narcan works. It's an epidemic impacting a high number of young people. Recent data shows nationwide 5% of adolescents between 12 and 17 reported non-medical use of pain relievers within the last year. And opioid abuse like this can sometimes lead to an overdose or even death. We hear stories about kids overdosing thinking that it's safe. But in an effort to save more lives. This is the part that you kind of hold towards somebody's nostril. Two state agents have partnered together to make this life-saving reverse drug for opioids free to teens under the age of 19. It's called naloxone, also known as Narcan. The naloxone or Narcan is, uh, you might also see it described that way, will actually disrupt the opioids from the receptors and get a person breathing again. It's amazing. This program allows young people to go to a treatment center and pick up the reverse drug. That way a friend or or family member can help them administer it in case of an emergency. The Catalyst Behavioral Center says they've given out a few of these reverse drugs since the program launched last fall, and they're prepared to help out more people. Obviously, we have a huge opiate dependence problem in the state of Oklahoma, just like across the nation, and we just want Oklahomans to know that there's help out there. Crystal Price, KOCO 5 News. In fact, some law enforcement agencies have been carrying the Narcan kits since 2014. We've told you that many teens are now opioid addicts, and there's a high school in the Oklahoma City Metro specifically for kids who are caught up in the state of addiction. Got to the point where I was taking 60 or 70 milligrams of Oxy just to get up in the morning. Ty started with alcohol and marijuana, then moved on to oxycodone. You know, I have to get up through the night and take pills because I would um, have withdrawals. He grew up in a self-described good home and started using in high school. I'm doing ceramics is actually. Wow, that's beautiful. He's in a new high school now, clean and months from graduation. I knew I couldn't go back to the school that I was at, my public school. Um, I wanted to stay clean. Didn't know how. I didn't know if I could. He came to us angry. He came to us um, acting out. A different person, just like the other students suffering from substance abuse when they started studies at Mission Academy, an accredited recovery-based high school in Oklahoma City. They really thrive and they've built a family unit between them. Without a doubt, we save lives. Lead teacher Doug McFerrin. The disease of addiction and what it does to families and um, it's really, it's more destructive than I, I think that people realize. At Mission Academy, students have classroom instruction, online courses, lab work, art classes, after school programs. They'll do one-on-one um, -on -one counseling. And weekly drug testing. For Ty, the community support here has been a game changer. It's the best friendships that I'll have for the rest of my life. You know, they're actually interested in how I'm doing and it gives me a chance to help other people too, which is really, really what keeps me happy, what gives me, you know, peace. And you know, Ty is a talented artist. He's currently interning at Paseo Pottery in Oklahoma City, and he is looking forward to going to college. He has come a long way. Our state is working to give Good Samaritans immunity during overdoses. Under the bill by Senator A.J. Griffin, those who step in to help could get immunity from that drug crime. Oklahoma is one of 13 with no Good Samaritan law for drug overdoses. A star OU football player overdosing on prescription painkillers. Well, the death of Austin Box broke the hearts of Sooner fans, but no one knows the pain like his mother. Years later, she has made it her mission to educate young Oklahomans on the state of addiction. You lose a piece of you. Gail Box has experienced unimaginable pain. Someone could have reached into my heart and, and ripped it out, literally. Her son passed away in 2011. Austin Box, a lifelong athlete who suffered injuries that kept him off the field. I 
think it was emotional because he'd been on emotional roller coaster in terms of, you know, playing and then he would have an injury and then he would have to rehab. It was almost a year before his death when Austin ended up with a ruptured disc in his back while playing football at the University of Oklahoma. And it was during that time he was given a very minimal one prescription. One 30-day prescription of hydrocodone, an opioid. His mother, Gail, believes that is when he got hooked and found other ways to get the prescription painkiller leading up to his death. And I think he was just kind of worn down, and I think he was very vulnerable. Gail created the Austin Box 12 Foundation to raise awareness of the dangers, especially for young athletes. It's easy to say, well, they just need to stop. Well, you know, I'm sure that Austin would have wanted to want to let down your team. I'm sure when he realized that he had gotten in too deep, but it takes you hostage. It hijacks your brain, it hijacks your body, and and you cannot you cannot stop. She has been through so much. Gail's advice to parents, if you feel there's something wrong, talk to your child about it. Now, we spoke with the head of the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids about how to help deal with a loved one who is also an addict. Parents really need to be having specific conversations with their kids about the dangers of misusing and abusing prescription medication. Um, they need to get their arms around the drug landscape, which is very different from uh, when, when we were all growing up. Um, and they also it's estimated use... that 10 million young people in America are in need of treatment for substance abuse and addiction. And many parents admit they are not doing everything they can to keep potentially dangerous painkillers away from their kids. Researchers at Johns Hopkins found that only two out of three parents admitted they did not store the drugs safely. And that is among parents who only had young kids at home. For parents of adolescents and teens, only one in nine stored the drugs in a safe place. Researchers say the study highlights the possibility that millions of American children are at risk of poisoning or overdose. There's definitely stigma all around, um, and there's this misunderstanding about addiction. Sometimes the toughest part about addiction is the stigma. How experts say it affects someone's willingness to get help. And athletes at risk after painful injuries, how doctors are working to keep them away from opioids. And if you have opioids at home that you are not using and don't need, you can safely dispose of them. The Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics has several drug drop box locations. You can drop off any medicine, no questions asked. We have posted a link to that information on our app. Look under the As Seen On section. You know, experts dealing with the epidemic say one of the biggest challenges isn't related to medical issues or even enforcement. It's actually the stigma surrounding addiction. Jerry Gish from our sister station in Pennsylvania with the story. It can be nearly as strong as addiction itself. The stigma in our society surrounding drug abuse. It's one of the biggest obstacles that, that we have in front of us right now if we're gonna defeat this. The medical community defines addiction as a disease. But that's not the way it's viewed by many in the public, and sometimes even among the family and friends of addicts. There's definitely stigma all around, um, and there's this misunderstanding about addiction. I think a lot of times it's just basically because people don't understand the whole disease process, and if they understood that better, um, I, I do believe there would be a lot less, um, a lot less stigma from the public. We don't judge cancer, we don't judge heart disease, we don't judge diabetes, and we should not be judging uh, drug addiction. And beyond the social judgment, stigma presents a challenge to fighting addiction because it can even prevent addicts and their families from seeking help. They are less likely to publicly seek help or um, you know, maybe they'll try and solve the problem on their own. Um, and sometimes that can be dangerous. Now the goal for many fighting against opioid abuse, remove the stigma that can hold us back from helping those in need. There are so many people out in society who think this is a choice, it's, it's a moral failing. In order for us to affect the changes we need to affect in society, people have to be willing to be out there, to be verbal, to be outspoken, and say, I'm affected by this. 
and addiction counselors do more than just fight the stigma of drug abuse. We sat down with an expert who was on the front line of helping those addicted. I talked to her about the realities of coming off the drugs and how patients can address their families. When they come in, they're kind of foggy brained. Terry Cobb is on the front lines helping drug addicted patients. She makes it clear coming off opioids involves every aspect of their lives. Emotional, yeah. mental, physical. It's all it's all a part of the of the journey at a chance to change. Terry helps patients get to the root of the problem that may have led to the addiction. A lot of times in working with our addicted clients, there is a history of some abuse or some form of trauma. Working through that helps them get better. But Terry admits it's work. I have hope for all of them that they can can move forward, but they have to want it. Terry says drugs can change brain chemistry and it can take 90 days for it to change back to normal and since some of her clients are adults with children she helps them address the entire family if we can educate our children to the facts about what's going on she believes having that open line of communication can often help children be less susceptible to falling victim to opioids we try to get our parents to examine their own walk and their own journey because honesty if we're honest with our kids they'll be more likely to respect us and trust us so could early behaviors predict eventual substance abuse? In short, the answer is yes. Five and six year olds who exhibit a combination of shyness, aggressiveness and rebellion were much more likely to use alcohol and drugs later in their teenage years. That's according to new research. The outcomes could be genetic in some cases, and there's no guarantee that those behaviors will cause your child to eventually become an addict. Athletes are at a high risk of abusing opioids after injuries. Now, to help fix the problem, some doctors in the metro are turning to other forms of pain treatment, and they're hoping it will keep the athletes away from opioids. KOCO's Crystal Price explains. We talked to some Oklahoma doctors who are using both old and new forms of treatment to help fight opioid dependency. They play to win, but when athletes get hurt, many doctors place them on opioid medication to help help with the pain, and sometimes it can turn to addiction. A recent study shows that adolescent athletes are more likely to develop an addiction to opioids because they have greater access to the medication. The problem that we see from a chronic pain side of things is that a lot of times patients get ramped up on the opiates first and foremost because that's what works the quickest and oftentimes what they will say works the best. But Dr. Justin Porter with Oklahoma Pain Management says not all pain has to be treated with opioids as he uses what they call an on cue pain ball to treat patients with knee injuries. We run it during the surgery so that by the time they wake up the legs are already feeling numb and they don't have very much pain. And Dr. Porter isn't alone. Dr. Stuart Lyle with the Oklahoma Sports Orthopedic Institute also looks for opportunities not to prescribe opioids. This here is a T-scope brace. He will often give patients braces for knee injuries, boots for sprained ankles, and and he also uses an ultrasound machine to help him give injections that numb certain joints. Both doctors say these alternative forms of pain treatment are just as effective as opioids, and they hope this will help bring addiction down. When you hear those stories, obviously it's devastating. It's hard to not feel guilty, and I think that's the message that we're all, everybody's trying to get across, is trying to avoid addictive medicines. Crystal Price, KOCO, 5 News. Living a life surrounded by addiction, the sobering moment for a Metro mother, what broke her habit? In Oklahoma, living in a state of addiction, the flaw that could be making it easier for addicts to get their fix despite a tough crackdown, and how some people take advantage of the system to get more drugs. You can safely get rid of potentially dangerous drugs like opioids. State drug agents have drop boxes at dozens of locations throughout the state. You can drop the meds off, no questions asked. The medicine is taken to a facility in Tulsa where it's destroyed and then converted into clean, renewable energy. It costs nothing to the state. Many counties have similar programs. A state of addiction hitting Oklahoma hard. Opioid abuse and addiction pulling families apart. Those addictions starting at very young ages. Only on five, a mother shares her years-long struggle with addiction and her fight to get clean.
I had some pretty traumatic things happen to me um, when I was a child. Jamie Beals is a survivor, a recovered drug and alcohol addicted mom whose addiction started early at 13 years old. That was the best way to get away from the way that I felt about myself. It just became part of my life and my world. At 13. At 13. Mm -hmm. You're a kid. She describes dabbling in all kinds of drugs, getting clean when she had daughters. That worked until she had a car crash and a minor injury. The doctor prescribed Laura Tabs. And for the next 10 years or so, she was addicted Laura Tab and other drugs. Then she added alcohol. Alcohol. So, and then when alcohol was in the mix, I just became a chaotic tornado. She kept it hidden. The drugs seemed to keep her on track. You wake up knowing whether or not you have your supply for the day. A minimum of three is necessary. 25 would be great. But eventually she spiraled out of control and when her teen daughters were planning on leaving the single mom to go live with a family member, she finally got help. Now I look at my girls and think I can't even imagine. Now she's been clean and sober for a year and she's not going back. Happy about life again. Excited to continue on. Excited to finish school so that I can go on to help other people. Some people go to extreme lengths to get their fix. Stacy Longarini got hooked on opioids after a C-section in the 90s. When her prescription ran out, she used her connections as a nurse to write her own prescriptions. She switched to heroin after getting busted. It's definitely a physical addiction, but for me, the mental obsession and compulsion, the want of immediate relief from any type of pain. She lost her marriage, abandoned her three children, she turned her life around, though. Stacy is getting help from a recovery center in Pennsylvania. She also works there. In recent years, Oklahoma has been able to better track patients who are trying to get opioids to feed their addiction. But not every state has a tracking system like this. Some Oklahomans have been caught going out of state to avoid the rules. KOCO's Crystal Price with this story. Oklahoma has had the PMP program for years, but the state of Missouri doesn't, and some Oklahomans have been taking advantage of that. When someone develops an addiction to opioids, sometimes they'll go to great lengths to get a prescription drug. And a recent study shows that Missouri has become a hot spot for addicts from Oklahoma to go. The reason? Missouri doesn't have a system that tracks a patient's prescription medicine history. A prescription drug monitoring program is not a silver bullet to the opiate epidemic, but it's a cornerstone that we don't have. If you pull up the PMP website. Here in Oklahoma, the prescription drug monitoring has been in place for years, and pharmacist Lindsay Roberts says it's helped her catch patients every week trying to write fake prescriptions for medicine. It's just a lot harder to get around the system of people like actually seeking the opioids and getting addicted to them and then not getting any help. So why doesn't Missouri have the prescription monitoring system. Many say the reason is because one state senator argues it violates a person's privacy. Putting everybody's information on a government database is not the answer. As a physician, I also care about the whole patient, and that includes their civil liberties and their rights. Crystal Price, KOCO 5 News. Now, a Missouri state representative proposed legislation to create a prescription monitoring program, but it has never passed. State drug agents say they've collected more than 100,000 pounds of drugs in boxes put out around Oklahoma. The goal, let you safely dispose of the meds and fight the state of addiction. We have posted a link to that information on our app. Look under the As Seen On section. Thank you for joining us tonight for this 30-minute special on opioid addiction. We will continue our coverage on the crisis throughout the year. And the spotlight on the state of addiction doesn't stop on air. We put a list of resources on the KOCO app. Look in the As Seen On section or under the State of Addiction tab.